Happy Friday 13th, everybody. Welcome back. Hopefully everybody's excited. It looks like we're going to be locked down again. Mark got a nice little rally going on. Looks pretty good. I don't know what the hell to expect. He got a rally and they said it locking down. I don't know what's going on. But let me tell you, it's a hell of a Friday morning. But uh, did you guys realize it's Friday the 13th? Friday the 13th, the most scariest day ever. I think what, how often do we have Friday the 13th in one year? Anybody know? Just curious. Happy Friday. Everyone's always excited about Friday the 13th. I don't know what it is, but anybody know? How many times do we have Friday the 13th? Neil has been a great today. Again, Jake, we're going to go talk about that on YouTube. Absolutely, Jake. Definitely going to see that one. Okay. Got to be, got to be what? Two, three times? That's what I think. I figure, right? Four times a year? Charles? All right. All right. Good, good, good. Well, anyway, there's a lot of stuff that's moving this morning. A lot of stocks that are moving. I'm telling you, it was a crappy pre-market from, uh, from uh, was it since Tuesday? We had that big rally on Monday until yesterday. I mean, three horrible days, but we had a great Friday afternoon. Let me tell you, yesterday afternoon, we killed it. I tell you, I got, I was, I got so close to getting shaken out. Yesterday, I was down a couple of hundred bucks. Um, and then I got into the afternoon. I was down about, you know, I ended up losing more. I got in this one position and it was, hold on, let me just bring it up. So Jaws, I'll tell you, that thing had some nasty shakes and then all of a sudden things just popped. So I made a lot of money on Jaws on the pop. I'll tell you, that thing really scared the hell out of us going into yesterday. But uh, but there was a lot of stocks that moved. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about what's moving today. Obviously, you see what's going on with DraftKings, BKNG. Listen, there's a lot of stocks that came out with earnings this morning. So you, you're seeing them already, even LI. I mean, LI, we've been trading LI for the last several days. Remember, I told you, you want to be a good swing trader, you damn well better learn how to day trade first. And, you know, you could say I could say had good earnings, but you know what? She lost a lot of this. She was up to 42. She's down to 46. Reminds me of Pinterest when Pinterest had a really big run. But there are a couple of stocks that are moving. We're going to go back. We're going to check them out. Before we do that, let's just talk about what happened yesterday. I want to start off with the, um, with the EV stock. that we had yesterday you know the stock gapped up pretty big let me just bring this up over here gapped up pretty big it wasn't a huge winner but it moved pretty nicely the stock took a little bit of a hit but um had a nice decent bounce in that i know is just an animal what an incredible swing trade on this stock but we've been trading this stock all day it's very hard to day trade because it's got nasty shakes this thing is like a category four you know, you got to be at least a thousand to a twenty five hundred dollar day trader. Now, it was pretty nice back in like April. It was at two dollars, but you know what? This got to be probably the best uh, COVID stock out there. Remember, what is this? This is Copycat uh, Tesla, and LI obviously is obviously trading is in the same industry. A lot of these electric cars are doing great. So anyway, what do we have? We had XPEV, right? That was the other one that we had yesterday. That one also had a pretty decent move. And sure enough, she's gapping up again today. Expensive, but this one, look at this, 20 to almost 50. Big profit taking going on right now. So on the stock, but once again, gapped up really, really nicely. And uh, one last one I just want to bring up. VXRT. That one also had a nice little move. Can't really see on that chart, but you can see it here. That one had a great pre-market trading. And BI, uh, there was a BIOC is also that we had that had a nice little move also. But this is a penny stock, so be careful. But anyway, it, Friday afternoons, we did pretty good. Friday afternoons were pretty good. Morning, I was like, you know, it was like nickels and dimes. You know nickels and dimes is. Nickels and dimes, nickels and dimes, nickels and dimes. Uh, Jaw looks like Jaw. Is that right, Craig? Yeah, absolutely. I, I totally agree with you on that one. That thing is... Uh, that thing was unbelievable. What a nasty stock uh, uh, Jaws was. <laughs> but, but Jaws, the stock, not that nasty. But anyway, we got a lot of good stocks that are moving this morning. I want to start off and talk about uh, what's going on uh, regarding about working on the B list. And then we'll talk about the A list. So let's talk about the B list, okay? The B list, I want to, you know, was LI. It was, you know, I found 8 o'clock this morning when we saw the stock up to 41, this stock was on the A list. Remember what I always tell you in class, okay? And I want you guys to understand something because 
I, I, I'm telling you, Neo is going to be the next one. I don't like stocks that go up too fast. It's not a good sign. It's actually really dangerous. It's fun on the way up. You're gonna you you you, you can you can you know drive yourself crazy and lose everything on the way down. If you're looking, you know, to do a swing trade, you want something that's going up slow and steady, not super fast. We saw what happened with Pinterest, okay? We did really, really well with Pinterest. We had that huge run up, and I said it. When that thing gapped up from 50 to 70, I'm like, damn it, you know, it's going up too fast. Uh, and it backed off. It went all the way down to 54. And I, I own it. I bought it back at like 57. I think I, I would say I bought it back at. But I wrote the thing down from 70 all the way down to 62. And I was like, damn, that's, especially when you have a lot of shares of it. You know, it's a lot of money. But um, I drove it down like seven points. And that was over one day. But I bought it back. I'm still a fan of it. And let me tell you, if they do shut down uh, certain states, specifically, guys, keep an eye on New York. New York, I don't know if you know this, but New York runs 10% of the economy of the United States. I don't know if, you really, if anyone ever knew that. That's a lot. So they shut down the New York City's schools and stuff like that. And I'm telling you, I am almost confident that they're going to do it right at the Thanksgiving. I don't know. They're going to probably say, you know what? They're going to have they could have uh, Christmas off uh, sooner than later. I could just be, I just feel it coming. I feel it coming. So I'm a little nervous of being long any positions right now because if they do that, you know they're they're already they already they already did in New York. They already talked about telling the restaurants they, should, they have to shut down by ten o'clock at night. So bars and everything. They, they, they're just testing stuff out. Actually, I'll give you a little, I'll, I'll tell you something that's happened in my school. They want to do a beta test right before uh, Thanksgiving. I think on Wednesday, Thanksgiving's on Thursday, uh, that all the kids are going to be remote. They want to do a beta test on that. They want to see how it works. Because right now the kids are like on and off from school and stuff. And I don't know, how, you know, I know there's people all over the world and all over the country here. You know, your, your rules are different than ours, even in Canada. And we got a lot of Canadians, but um, why would they do that? Why would they want to do a, 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 a test to see how it works to have the kids home from school? They just they just set they get just getting ready to do it. Trust me. Especially the numbers are up. I mean, listen, read between the lines. This is going to be a great opportunity again. So I would just be very concerned to be long certain positions, uh, and then also <laughs> be ready be ready to maybe short some positions too. But there'll be another opportunity out there. Uh, they already did this many uh, in many towns in Connecticut. Greg is saying, okay. It's like that in Boston right now, Patrick. All right. Posey, Virginia is my own town, has 59 COVID uh, cases. Listen, the numbers are up. The, the only thing that, that I'm kind of like um, torn, there's not that many people dying anymore. I mean, you know, listen, everybody gets sick, right? But you're not really seeing the deaths like we did in the beginning. I mean, it was it was horrible what it was. But I, that's the only thing you, you, know, you hear. That's all you hear is cases. You're not hearing like deaths which is a good thing. So that's something we, we got to worry about. And also the only other concern I have, they don't think they know the long-term effect of this virus. So that's the other thing. So if they come out with a vaccine, you know, they're like, I don't know. I mean, is this something that could, if you could be with you for the next two, three years, five years, you know, who knows, but um, less than 2%, you know, listen, any percent is terrible. All right. But that was a, that was horrible. What happened in March and April, um, but uh, but let's just hope, let's hope for the best, right? Let's pray. But anyway, let's go see what's going on. We got a couple of stocks. We got LI. We got Sun W. That's moving. Oop, typed in the wrong box. Sun W. Uh, Sun W made a really nice move. You know, we remember we traded this stock and went from a dollar to eight dollars in two days. That was an awesome stock. That was a great short squeeze. She also had a nice little push early in the morning. I know a bunch of you jumped in it, and hopefully you learned your lesson. You can't go broke taking profits. But that one, I'm gonna put it back on on the watch list. Neo's going back on the watch list again. Um, you could see his thing just made lower lows, but it gapped up huge from 49 to 52. And these things just an animal, just an animal. I, I still can't believe the stock we were trading was at two bucks. Bolo, another stock that we've been also trading doing well. We actually traded the stock yesterday. We did pretty well with that one. And uh, she gapped up pretty nicely, but look what's happening on the downtrend. She already went from 50, 570 down to five dollars 70 cents is a lot for a stock like this to move and another stock i really ever bring this up ever i mean i haven't traded cisco forever i hated this stock i with a passion i mean this was like 25 years ago cisco was like 
Amazon, you know, Intel. You know, uh, these were like, this was like one of the, 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 the top five stocks that you would trade, the most volatile stocks. And it has gone absolutely nowhere. I mean, all they did was, uh, is they kept buying companies out, buying companies, if you try to be a big conglomerate. Um, I'm just really upset with them because I used to use WebEx and they bought out WebEx and they destroyed it, destroyed the company. You know, they got to, they got to learn, they got to start learning how to, you know, get rid of some of these companies and let them trade on their own. But, uh, but they, you know, listen, they came up with some good earnings. They say it wasn't bad as they say, expected to be this morning, but you know what? Let's see what you can see what happens because people are asking me about what do you think of Cisco? But I want to go to the A list. Let's go to the A list. A list, we got DraftKings. You already know about that one, right? DK and G. So DraftKings had a major resistance levels uh, right here. I'm going to show it to you right here. I'm going to bring it here on level four. You could see that there was a bring this up right here. There was these big iceberg orders that got filled right here. You could see them right there. This guy was out there at 46. And then it, it bumped into a bunch more here. And you can see how he kept lowering his offer, lowering his offer, lowering his offer. And he keeps coming back. But um, you got to remember that we were trading DraftKings and we made a killing on DraftKings. We rode this thing all the way to 65. And a lot of us own it at 22. We did really well with DraftKings. But, um, but she looks like she's trying to make a little bit of a comeback. I think they said also their earnings were better than they were expected. What do I have over here? So anyway, oh, another thing, guys. Please keep politics out of it. Do not bring up politics in the room. All right. If you do it, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna shut you down for a day. All right. Just gonna let you know. I don't want to make anything political. You know that's one of the rules here. You know, don't 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 take things personal. All right. But we're all the same party in the party of traders. So please keep that in mind. All right. Good. So um, DraftKings on the A list. Another stock that's on the A list is uh, CBAT. There we go. I was like, I hit the wrong symbol again. So CBAT is a nice stock also. I might move her back to the B list because, I don't know, she looks like she was trending up pretty nicely. She's got pretty, she's pretty strong right here. She's got some nice, nice support levels. You could see that they're, you know, right here, eh, not too crazy on the level three. You got some 4,000s and so on. 4.4 million shares, a lot of shares. IDEX. I put this on the A list for one reason. It's not up a lot. We traded it um, back in June. It ran from 50 cents to $4. She's a level one stock, so everybody here can kind of really trade it. You know, it's not the it's not the end of the world. It's a nice moving stock. But but overall, you know, as much as I thought we were having, it was going great for us this morning, because it's Friday the 13th, just be very careful. I don't like trading on Friday the 13th, but I'm only going to focus on nickels and dimes. I'm not going to focus on home runs. If it happens, God bless me If it and, and you. But if it doesn't, don't worry about it. Don't go crazy. But there are a couple of stocks I do want to keep. And remember, you only need one. There were a couple other ones that were here I saw. I didn't want to throw them on the list. This was like, this stock is up 93%. It looks like a buyout to me. You know, people ask me, what did you think of this one, this one? H-O-F-E, another one. You know, to me, I, I looked at it, you know, it was a little bit more of an algo stock. I don't know. You know what? It, maybe maybe now it just started moving. I'm going to throw it back on my A list. H O F V. I didn't I didn't put that one in there yet. I'm going to throw it on there. Um, these old penny stocks. It's old garbage. Yeah, that one's backing off. No really good shorts here. Sava. We had that one that we did pretty well. That's taking a big hit. That might be a good short right there. We'll keep going. that one. Put that on this. We'll put that one on the uh, B list. S A B A. All right. Anybody? Did I miss anything? Anything else? What do we got? Jake on uh, YouTube says uh, Neo's got support at fifty. Well, there is a. Let me go check for you. Let me go see who's out there. Neo's just been a swing trade, Jake. I'll be honest with you. It's a really hard stock to day trade. This thing really does some nasty, nasty shakes. It's just, it's just loading up right now. Uh, yeah, you see right here, you said 50, right? I mean, there's a 70,000 shit. Yeah, you see right there? There's a 70,000, 77,000 share buyer out there. This guy's been out there all day. So there's a major, there is a major support level there. Yeah, no, 78,000. Not, not, uh, not only 55, 78,000. A lot of money, a lot of shares out there. Neil on the in the cyber group room says SPI garbage. I would stay away from it. Robert, 
in the cyber group room, NAVB. Eh, eh, penny stock. You know how I feel about that. You know? Is that a stock? W-A-O? No, nah, not. Nah. Didn't know what that was, Jose. H-O-F-V. A norm. Eh, you know what? It's kind of flat. Like I said, it, it's moving. I like it. It's making a higher high. We'll see how she works out. All right, everybody. Market opens up in a little less than 15 minutes. Let's go fill up our coffee. Uh, let's get ready for the open. Remember, if you're watching us live on YouTube, Facebook Live, if you want to join us, just click on the bottom, like us, friend us. And you know what? For $9, come in the trading room for a whole week and see how it works out. See how you like it. In the meantime, um, before we go, just really quick, and I want to share this, everyone. Listen, next week, very big week. A lot, I'm gonna, uh, let me just bring this up here. So we got, just don't forget, closing bell. We got my buddy Tom Sostoff is going to come right after the close at 4.15. You do not want to miss it. If you want to learn, understand more about how I use my options, you know, towards my day trading, well, you're going to, you're going to get it from the horse's mouth right here. One of the well, most well-known people in the option community. And this is an exclusive event. This is not a multi-speaker event where you got 50, 100 speakers and stuff like that. This is just me and Tom. And I'm going to, we're going to, you know, I'm going to want you guys to send me questions that you feel you want me to ask him. And I'm going to share them with you. Okay. We're going to do a rapid uh, uh, event with him. So don't miss that opportunity. And right after that, I will be showing you how I use those options towards day trading. All right, guys. So everyone, good luck. Happy trading. Be safe. If I don't see you in the afternoon, enjoy your weekend. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you then. See you back at 2.30.